Hi, I'm Marty Maxwell-Lane, Associate Professor of Graphic Design at the University of Arkansas. Today I'm going to share a semester-long collaborative project that was carried out in the spring of 2018. Senior graphic design students enrolled in human-centered design collaborated with a local nonprofit to examine the ways in which human-centered design research methods could help to build community and establish a framework for future community engagements. Springdale, Arkansas is located 20 minutes north of the University of Arkansas campus. It is in Northwest Arkansas, which as a whole is rapidly growing. Between 2010 and 2018, it was the 13th fastest growing area in the United States. Due to great economic opportunity for a variety of workers, Springdale has become a, one of the most diverse communities in the area, home to a vibrant Latinx and Marshallese community. However, many people from these communities lack representation and lack access to community decision-making, which is particularly challenging during this time of gentrification. There are working-class neighborhoods that are largely occupied by Latinx and Marshallese communities. The neighborhoods are being transformed. Some would say improved. Some would say it is creating conditions that may force these diverse communities out of the neighborhood. During this time of change, some neighborhoods have become rather desolate. Where there once were vibrant block parties and a tight-knit community, there is now a lack of activity. The Teen Action Support Center was founded in 2009 and created the station, a downtown Springdale teen collaboratory, to empower teens to take action in their lives and communities. They work to engage teens from the area neighborhoods and larger Springdale community. They are strategically located in the heart of the downtown gentrification. One of the things I love most about the station is that they employ teen interns from the neighborhood, many who go on to be leaders at the station or community organizers or head on to college. The station offers a place for teens to experiment with robotics, make art, record music, and a professional recording studio. In addition, they offer counseling for teens and families. The station also houses an office for the Washington County Juvenile Court. It's hidden a bit as to not disrupt the moon, but they do serve at-risk teens. I was introduced to Aaron Shelton, executive director of the station, and we discussed ways that my human-centered design course could support a series of community block parties the station was hosting. The station had recently been awarded a grant to host a series of four block parties to engage the neighborhood and particularly the area teens. A side note for later, as you can see in the photo, the age of my students in my class and the age of the teen interns is really very close. I think this played a critical role in the success of the project, but more on that later. Human Centered Design is a studio that students in our BFA program take the first semester of their senior year. It's largely a research methods course where students are exposed to ethical methodologies for carrying out human centered research. We focus quite a bit on diversity and inclusion as related to research methods. We make sure students are mindful of who they are including or excluding from their research, make sure all biases are addressed at the outside of the project, and take on the motto of designing with, not for. This course builds on students' knowledge from their user experience course and prepares them for designing for complexity and the self-directed degree project course they take in their last semester. We typically collaborate with a community either in human-centered design or designing for complexity, but rarely both, as back-to-back -back intensive community collaborations can be taxing on students. During this course, my human-centered design course partnered with the station, as well as another school of art course, Social Justice in the Arts. The Social Justice in the Arts students focused on neighborhood activations leading up to the block party to help build trust and community interest. This is the house around the corner from the station that the station had rented to serve as a hub for the block party. In this exact neighborhood, there used to be a neighborhood matriarch that would host community block parties. For one reason or another, those stopped, but many people still remember them. We've come to call this the Allen House. You'll notice these kids are younger than teenagers. Of the, over the course of the collaboration, the teens proved to be one of the most challenging groups to engage. While the social justice and the arts students focused on building community engagement leading up to the block party, our human-centered design course planned to use the first block party as a prototype to gather data about the community needs and desires in a way that would authentically engage the community. The first step in our process was to introduce the two collaborative groups. For this stage, it was the human-centered design students and the teen interns from the station. 
they got together to do some foundational learning. We loaded up and headed 20 minutes north to the station and had an hour-long conversation about the neighborhood. Through student-led conversations, we dug into the neighborhood, what the teens desired for their peers, for themselves, and for the next generation. One beautiful connection that emerged was that one of my students actually grew up very nearby and went to high school with several of the teen interns. While the conversation was very organic, it was not without extensive planning. Before coming to the station, my students had done secondary research and had broken into teams with assigned roles for the day. The more outgoing students would sit in the front and help lead the conversation. Other students served as long-form note-takers, others had short idea capturers on post-it notes, others were mappers, mapping the post-it notes in real time and finding affinities, connections, and lastly, a photographer. Each student had an important role to play, and it all had to be carried out with being obtrusive to the conversation. We would then take these analog maps back with us to the classroom to dissect and build on. While students were digging into their research and getting a foundational understanding for the community, we also began working on the branding for the block party. The branding of the event was not a focus of the course, but was something we wanted to do in service of the event. And the process did help to build trust and strengthen the relationships between the students and the community. My design students worked closely with the teen interns from the station throughout the project, co-creating the branding, the concept, and the block party itself. We headed back to the Allen House for the students to present their first round of branding concepts. The concepts were based on ideas generated and values learned during our first mapping session. It was a humble pre presentation. Students brought paper printouts and we presented their ideas to a group of teen interns and community members. The decision to present humbly and at the Allen House was strategic. We could have met at the university, but it didn't feel authentic yet, and we hadn't yet reached a stage of equal collaboration. The power dynamics would have been skewed, and I do not think the community would have felt as if they had as much agency to participate in the creative process. After all of the students presented, we had to work to select one brand for the event. During the discussion, the station team worked to narrow down the language, concept, and imagery that resonated the most with them. They worked with the students on the spot to come up with a direction that blended aspects that they felt the most connected to. The end result was building the block with Rimen and was completed in three languages, English, Spanish, and Marshallese. About 40% of my class was bilingual in Spanish and English, making the translations easy to manage. Once the branding was established, the students worked to flesh out the marketing, including neighborhood yard signs, social media, flyers, etc. Concurrently, the students were working on developing human-centered research studies that they could carry out at the block party. We invited the station team to campus to help assemble the signs and to review some preliminary research ideas. Everyone, including the executive director of the station and myself, were in the assembly line working together. Much like cooking, making things together works to build trust, empathy, and understanding, three components that are key to human centered <laughs> While the sign making was going on upstairs, Aaron Shelton went downstairs to review early ideas that the students were generating for the block party. We knew that all the activities had to be trilingual and they had to engage a range of ages from young kids to teens to adults. The activities had to gather quantitative and qualitative data while also entertaining and engaging. The type of data that we were gathering was based on the conversations that we had at the very beginning of the collaboration and on the needs learned throughout our collaborative engagement. We wanted to make sure that what we were gathering would be useful to the station after the event that would help them better understand the needs and desires of the neighborhood and help them plan the following block parties. Students landed on ideas like a vent bingo card that would tell us about people's lifestyles, a dream wall that captured teams' aspirations, a photo booth that would provide free high-quality family photos to the community, and tell us a little bit about the makeup of those families, and a game called This or That that would track how people voted when given a choice. The event was held on Saturday 
in the spring. Students all attended and ran their booths in various activities, documenting, capturing data, and engaging with the community. One of the main takeaways that the students learned from this was the differences in experience and quality of outcome that you get from different types of research methods. We could have sent out a survey to the neighborhood homes, even trilingual ones, but the quality of responses just would not compare to the information learned through this deep 15-week collaboration. Additionally, students learned through hands-on experience what an empathy-driven and inclusive research practice can look like. While we watch a little bit of this video, itself created by an area teen connected to the station, I want to share this quote from Aaron Shelton, who, as I mentioned, was the executive director of the station. Quoting Aaron, Building the block? It may be cliche to say, but you had to be there. You had to be the student, the neighborhood kid, that family, that organizer, or one of the centered humans. Maybe that is the main lesson. As an abstraction, human-centered design can never be properly understood. You have to be immersed. You have to get beyond your comfort zone and trust the process. That's what happened. By trusting the process, by being a little vulnerable, Marty and her students earned our trust. It is only with trust that any human can truly be centered. Building the block taught us all so much. Ultimately, we learned that there is always more to learn. We are one big human family after all. Did I mention it was a blast? Oh, and lots of hugs. Lots and lots of hugs. After the event, students had to review the data, identify insights, and present our findings. The students created information diagrams based on the data. For example, the dream wall they broke down into dreams in, to categories like self-oriented versus career-oriented, grounded versus speculative. From the bingo cards, they could provide data around how many adults have cars, how many teens went to college, how many people hold multiple jobs. This type of data can help organizations like the station work to better engage communities. The students compiled the findings into a book that now permanently lives with the station. When we first met with the station, many of the teens shared frustrations about not having a voice in the decisions that were being made about their community. They openly wondered about how the city could better engage with the local community and teens. I believe that through this process, they have learned ways that they could engage their community and, and improve access to decision making. While that was not an original goal of the project, it's a rather impactful one. The book that the class left behind not only documents the block party and the insights from the human-centered design research, but also functions as a guidebook so they can utilize some of the same methods in the future, whether for block parties or for other civic engagement. My hope is that this project has demonstrated the value of human-centered approach, not only to my students, but also to the community and has taught my students the value of empathy and inclusive research practices. Thank you all for your time. If anybody would like to continue this discussion, please do reach out. It's nclane at uark.edu. Thank you.